Hello everyone, today I'm going to be doing a deck tech for my Mono Blue Empress Galena Theft deck. And I'm sure you can tell this is not a real magic card, this is a proxy for a real magic card. Uh, and I got it mainly because I built this deck when Dom was a thing, and I really liked the Legend uh, frame. So I decided to get a proxy of it, because the other one is like from Onslaught or Invasion or one of those old sets. Regardless, going through the deck, I'm not going to go to anything too particular. I got a lot of islands, a whole big stack of them as you can see. That's how many islands I didn't count. And anyways, aside from lands, this whole video and the whole deck is in no particular order, but I'm going to go through all the cards and I'm going to say why I run them. So the whole deck's premises is, if you didn't have a chance to read it, pay two mana, gain control of target, legendary, permanent, which is planeswalkers, pretty much anything legendary, planeswalkers, creatures, lands, not sorceries and instants though, because they're not permanents, but I digress. Continuing forward, the whole point of this deck is, did you ever look at a thread on the board and think, man, I really want to get rid of that, or like, that's really an issue? The whole concept of this deck is, instead of like, getting rid of it, instead, you can just have it, right? So that's the premise of this deck, is instead of getting rid of threats, you just take them for yourself. So you always have the best thing on the board. So, Thespian Stage, taps for a colorless, doesn't really matter in monocolored decks, because, you know, got a whole stack of island under their blue producing things pay two mana becomes the best land on the field that's really it reliquary tower you don't have a max hand size speaks for itself arch of Araska, it's a monocolored deck ascending's pretty common in edh and five mana to draw a card is not really a bad idea you know like if you have the mana on the end of someone's turn and you're mono blue so you're holding up mana anyways like worst case scenario you just draw a card Myriad Landscape, because there's really no such thing as ramp in mono blue, this is the closest you're, like, you know, closest you're going to get to it. Lonely Sandbar, it's a land, enters tap, not super great, but it can cycle, so there's that. Nixos, you're playing a mono blue deck, I tap two mana, and I may, I probably get four mana from it. At the very, you know, that's like Nixos's worst thing. But the other reason I run it aside from getting ramp is, is when I'm playing opponent's decks and I'm, you know, stealing their creatures, if their creatures have activated abilities that require, you know, black or whatever mana of a color I don't control, this can help me pay two mana to, you know, get the devotion for it so I can start paying into effects. Halimar Depths is basically just Sensei's top for a one-time tap land. It's pretty good turn one, sets up your draws, you know. Tectonic Edge. You need land destruction. Because one of this deck's biggest weaknesses is a land called Homeward Path. And if you're not familiar, it taps for a colorless. Or you can tap it and it says, each player gains control of all permanents they own. Which is the exact opposite of what this deck's trying to do. Arcane Lighthouse, so I can target creatures with Shroud and Hexproof, you know, so I can steal them. Soldevi Excavations, when it enters... Uh, bury an untapped island, you add one in a blue, or pay one, scrap one. Not bad for a land, you know. It's basically like a bounce land. Or slightly worse. Or better. Tell me in the comments. Castle Vantress, mono blue, pay four mana, scry two on the end step. Pretty solid, and I probably have an island. Soul Ring, because I'm not an idiot. Dig Through Time. Uh, a lot of cards get discarded pretty quick. Two mana to get rid of my grave and, you know, essentially scry seven and put two in my hand. It's Well, it's not scry seven. Oh, that's how I look at it. It's kind of like scry seven and then take the two best options and then just get rid of the rest. Mind control is the primary way that this deck steals cards. It's just you slap on enchant creature, you control enchanted creature, there's cheaper effects in this mind control. I just really like this art a lot. And, you know, five mana for that rate's pretty good. Take Possession, just a slightly worse mind control, slightly better mind control. So split seconds, so gets around Sensei's top and things like that. And it hits permanence. Seven mana's kind of steep, but, you know, it hits permanence and it's, you know, split second. That's kind of how I look at it, is five mana for... One more six mana to make it a permanent. One more seven mana to give it a split second. Works for me. Chromatic Lantern kind of seems silly in a monocolored deck. But 
Again, when I'm trying to steal my opponent's creatures, if they have activated abilities of colors I don't control, it works out well. Plus, it's a three mana rock at the very worst. Dream Leash, enchant permanent, only on a tapped permanent, and you just get it. So, steal a land if you'd like. Fairy Artisans really works off what my opponents play. Really works well for ETB triggers. Really, really works well for that. Plus, four mana flying 2-2. Two, two. Not super good of a rate, but the effect is kind of nuts. So, Mystic Confluence. If you're playing Mono Blue, you should be running it. It's usually the way I play it is a five mana counter spell that draws two cards. Worst case scenario, you're like, you really, really counter a spell. You draw three cards. You bounce three things or any combination of those in a three multitude. Omniscience, because I like to play, play cards for free. Or a thief, because... um. Do you guys remember when the Estrid Precon came out? This card became a really, really big deal. And um, honestly, it's not, like, playing with it, it's not as good as you'd think. People just don't swing into you, which is kind of the best part about it. But if someone has, like, a Swords or a Path or a Bounce spell, they just do it. Cage Sun for double mana. Corrupted Conscious to steal a thing and give an Infect. Royal Elemental. I'm not crazy about Royal Elemental just because it's such a heavy land drop, or not land drop, mana cost. And like six mana, three, two flyer. Yeah, the effect's really good, but I mean, like, he can just get shocked and he's dead. Like, he's just too easy to kill, and there's like just such a downside to him. Lonely Robot. He's ramp and card draw. Can't really recur him, but he's a good four mana slot. Steel Enchantment does literally what you'd think it does. Cure the Glass Spinner is a blessing and a curse at the same time. It's really good. The reason it's in the deck is because creatures you control uh, have pseudo hex proof, you know, because it goes away after one. But if I want to target my own creatures or the creatures I steal, then it gets countered and it's kind of rough. Thassa God of the Sea is good just as an indestructible body, makes things unblockable and Mainly because it scries one every turn. That's kind of relevant. Because the way this deck works a lot is this deck can't win without an opponent's deck on the field. So you need like the extra card or card advantage from scrying just to be able to adapt to situations better. It's kind of like it. Helm of Possession. Give you a second to read that. You can choose to untap it or not. Pay two, sack a creature, gain control of a creature as long as it stays tapped. This is the only tap effect, aside from Vidalkin Shackles, but that's a little secret for later. The only other sack effect, or tap effect rather, that I use, just because it's too easy to like destroy, because there's like a lot of creatures that say, like let's say she can't be in the deck, but Rubina Soulslinger, for example, that just says, oh, for as long as it's tapped, you just gain control of enchanted creature, but creatures are the easiest thing to kill. You know, you get, there's targeted removal, board wipes, things like that. Artifact's a little harder to hit, and uh, sack a creature's not too bad, especially if I can steal an opponent's creature and then sack it for a better creature later on. So, there's that. Man mass manipulation, so I can manipulate the masses. Talent of the Telepath is when... Oh, Jesus, out of frame for a bit. Sorry about that. Talent of the Telepath is uh, it's kind of an all-star. I'm not going to lie. It doesn't really seem like it, because Spell Mastery is pretty easy to get in this deck. Does not run many creatures, which is kind of a fault to it, but I don't think I've ever not cast it for Spell Mastery. So target opponent digs seven deep, and then you cast uh, two instant or sorceries from them, and most likely you're going to hit two. At worst, I've I've only ever hit one at the very worst using Spell Mastery, because, you know, seven cards, it's like a tenth of the deck almost. Beguiler of Wills. Uh, she's kind of good in theory. She's pretty easy to kill. But that's like the whole dies to removal situation. She's a 5 mana 1-1, one, one, which is a garbage rate. But she's just tapped to gain control of things. So if she lives a turn, you just start stealing things on a stick. Like better than Galena, honestly. Blatant Thievery, so I can blatantly steal things. It's exactly what it does for each opponent, gain control of something they have. 7 mana is kind of steep though, but you know, whatever. Plus, like, the three cost effect isn't really relevant when you're playing a monocolored deck that just might as well say three other mana, or you can't really use your artifacts to tap for it. Serum Visions, it's a cantrip. Girl card, scry two, you know, replaces itself, and then 
it's just like better opt. That's really it. You can argue it's like not better opt, but I'd rather do a reverse opt and scry an extra than just, you know, do it at like instant speed. Plus, like, no one's ever going to counter it. It's just like not worth it. Acquire, so I can acquire my opponent's decks. Just take the best artifact from them and then just put it on the field. Worst case scenario, it's a soul ring. Best case scenario, it's like a Blightsteel Colossus. So, five mana for a soul ring isn't even that bad. Stunt double. He's. I keep doing this. I keep, keep hitting the table. And I'm sorry I do it, but I'm just resting my hand. But I digress, whatever. So if you see it's like the video shaking, that's why. Stunt double. Better clone. It's just clone with flash. That's it. <laughs> it's just a clone with flash. Entrancing melody. Um, sometimes not as good as a mind control effect. Sometimes better than a mind control effect like if i want to take like a low costed creature or a token you know that's not bad but it could be worse if i say like i want to take a creature and i end up paying seven for it then it's not fantastic but for smaller creatures it's pretty good volition reigns i kind of like this card a lot so it's enchant permanent when it enters the battlefield if enchanted permanent is tapped untap it you control enchanted permanent so the reason i like this is because I'm sure many of you have seen where if you play against an opponent, they'll get salty. If you try and take her, you know, blow up anything, they'll be like, well, in response, I'll just tap it, you know. But this, this prevents it. It's just, it's the double month, triple month, whatever the saying is. Desertion's just like a weird counter spell. It's five mana counter, which isn't great, but if it's like a creature or artifact, I just get it instead. So it's, I feel like the most common things that get played in Magic, aside from lands, or probably even more than lands, are creatures and artifacts. So, five mana, just steal one. <sighs> Mirage Mirror. I feel like this card should be played more, and it's not. I remember when Hour came out, me and my buddies were talking, we're like, so it's a three mana artifact, and then you pay two mana to have the best thing on the field, like, in the next turn it resets. That's kind of nuts. It's either like a big creature, it's a land if you need to get more, like, you know, filter mana. It's an enchantment if you need, like, an effect like Mirage Wake. It's a big artifact like Blightsteel Colossus. Or you can even make it a Mirage Mirror. That's a good combo. <sighs> Aether Snatch is just a slightly different desertion where it's you just gain control of the spell. So if it's a creature, or artifact, or whatever it is, you just get it. Or if your opponent casts, like, an instant or sorcery, instead you do that effect, and then you can, like, you know, pick new targets for it. So if it's, like, target player takes an extra turn, it's like, uh, I'll pay six and I'll take an extra turn. Propaganda, so people do not attack me. Preordain, because it's a better serum visions. Right of replication, so I can have one or five of the best thing on the field. Best creature on the field, rather. Cure best the sea god. Now, it's funny, because when this card first came out recently, I was like, high mana cost, but I mean, 7 mana for an 8-8 with Hexproof, that's a pretty good rate. Then, you tap on non-land target opponent's controls, so, and then they don't untap, so you just sleep their whole field, and uh, you got an 8-8, so you're probably swinging for uh, 16, and then you just gain control of the best thing on the field. Seems good. I'll, like, that's, like, fine. And, like, if you can blink it or do anything like that, just restarts. Cyclonic Rift, because I'm playing the color blue, and it should be in every blue deck. Swan Song for a little sneaky counter. Bribery, it's just like a choir, but instead, I get the best creature on the field. And just like a choir, it's probably a Blightsteel. Or a big Eldrazi. I've had both. I prefer the Eldrazi, to be honest. Blightsteel is kind of like, eh. Well, not he's, he's really good, but you know what I mean. Like, he's just kind of like... He's unique, but I feel like he's kind of vanilla, where he's just like, oh, I'll swing and you lose the game, because, you know, he's a, what, 12-12 with Trample and Infect, so you better got blockers. But I kind of like the Eldrazi, because they're just like a big threat constantly. Well, Blightsteel is also, but that's another conversation for later. Tell them in performance, target player mills until they get a creature, you just get that creature. It's five mana, it's random. If you're playing um, creatureless decks, really really good if you're playing a creatureless deck like i played against an elsha of the infinite with this five mana milled their entire deck 
seemed like a pretty good win. Any Proteus staff combo deck this instantly kills, but that's not really why it's in here. Disallow, because it's a super counter spell. Mind's Dilation. Can't see it, but it's foil. Um, no one likes it. If you can get it down, it's sick. And uh, most case scenario, you just exile lands. But best case scenario, you exile big things. And that's kind of the point. Thoughts is Oracle, because I'm playing mono blue, and it just seems like a good idea. <laughs> that's really it. all I'm going to say about that. Persuasion. It's just a not as good uh, mind control. That's it. Swiftfoot boots to give my commander or the things I take hexproof. Leyline Singularity, because the little combo is, it makes all non-land permanents legendary. So, or sorry, all non-land permanents legendary. So, that means I can take everything. Also, a little tech is this says tokens just, more than one token just can exist because they're, you know, let's say soldier tokens. So let's say you played Raise the Alarm. You're only getting one soldier token. Well, you get two ETBs, but, you know, they're legendary, so you have to sack them. Search for Iskanta. Same reason with uh, Old Thassa is because Scrying's good, and then uh, if you flip it, it's a, uh, what is it, Narset Parter Avail's ability? Fada Adele. It's Island Walk. It's literally a three mana hit someone with an island, and you get a soul ring. I've never not had that happen. Well, I have, but, you know, like, it's 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 so likely that it does. Thought Vessel. No max hand size. It's ramp. Narset. Uh, like I said, there's not many creatures in this deck, and um, my opponents, as you've seen in EDH, typically enjoy drawing cards, so this kind of stops it. New Thassa. Um, so, funny ruling with her. Let me see if I can find, like, a mind control effect. But, since she says, exile it and then return it to the battlefield under your control. So, let's say I use Persuasion, right? And I put it on my opponent's creature, right? I can now blink this. It'll come back. This will go away. But this is my card now. This is just mine. Because before, if they just blow up the enchantment, they get it back. But... The enchantment goes away, and since you return it to the battlefield under your control, it stays with you. So it's just harder to remove. And plus, you know, blink abilities are good. Fell Warstone, because it's ramp, and you can also get those other colors. Evacuation, because there's not really nukes and mono blue, so this is the best you're getting. Vidalkin Shackles, because you pay two mana to steal a creature. And, like, it's mono blue. You got, like, this many islands expropriate i'm just gonna say because it's expropriate as foretold kind of comes in clutch not gonna lie uh you know it's free spells starts off at like nothing and then uh if it like goes unchecked you're just like casting free spells and it's not on your turn it's every turn uh you can cast a spell with cmc equal to or less than the amount of uh the as foretold count how many counters on it what kind of counters does it even say? Put a time counter. Okay. Whatever. Kaiga. It's a big stinky creature. And if it dies, I take a creature. How did this get in here? Don't talk about that. Frantic Search, because it's a free spell. It's, uh... I mean, you gotta have three mana, but, like, it's a free spell. And if you have Temple of the False God, it's Ramp. I actually don't know if I have Temple in here. I don't remember. Control Magic. It's just good mind control. It's four mana instead of five. Archmage's Charm, because it says counter a spell, draw two cards, or gain control of a soul ring, or a token. So, the dream with this card is to get a token of that Desolation Twin. Just You just steal the Desolation Twin token. Chaos Wand, because it's phenomenal. Um, people run powerful cards in EDH, and... Uh, Powerful cards means powerful instants and sorceries. So this gets them. This just it just gets them. Commandeer, because it's com commandeer. Commandeer. It's a free spell. You know, but if you have the two blue cards in your hand, but mono blue. And uh you just steal a creature. It's ba basically not blue. I can't speak today. And it's not just a creature. It's only non-creatures, actually. So you just get it. Ristic study. It's Ristic Study. Nyx Bloom, because I'm playing mono blue and it's ramp. Sower of Temptations, because it's 2 mana 2-2 two, two flyer, and when it enters, I steal a creature until it goes away. 
Sapphire Medallion, so my things cost one less. And Agent of Treachery, because he's very treacherous, and I like to steal permanents. Plus, if you do this and, like, you kick a red of replication on him, the game's pretty much over. Like, on your end step, you're drawing, like, what, 15 cards on your end step? Seems pretty good to me. And that is my Empress Golina deck. So tell me what you think in the comments below. I'm not counting the islands. There's this many. So uh, there's that many. It's for sure over 20. That's That's my answer. But thank you guys for watching. If you like the video, like it, comment, and subscribe. And actually just comment telling me things uh, you like about the deck or things you would cut, things you would improve. If you have Empress going to decks, that's kind of epic. Tell me about that and tell me what you put in there. So uh, that's all for today. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching.